Well, you know what? I am really surprised that this came uh, so soon. I'm really happy, obviously, but uh, so this is the package that um, arrived from the National uh, World War I uh, Museum and Memorial from Kansas City. And well, I don't know if it came from that location, but that's where they're located. Anyways, yeah, I ordered um, a few items last week and I'm just amazed that I showed up. I'll show you what the uh, invoice says first. So I ended up, oh, look at this, nice. I got the In Flanders Fields uh, poem here. And then, uh, well, that'll be interesting uh, to, uh, to put up somewhere. Anyways, yeah. So I ended up getting, and we'll take a look at them, I ended up getting four things, and I, I think I mentioned in a previous video I was, uh, uh, I should have bit, I just didn't realize that Rob and I were going to do uh, potluck themed game days, um, and now we're doing the U.S. Civil War, and I could have uh, purchased that uh, U.S. Army uh, cookbook and ration field guide thing in the jig or whatever. Anyways, I picked up one of their gas mask t-shirts. Uh, the Whiz Bangs and Woodbines Tales of Work and Play on the Western Front, History Heroes World War I card game, and the World War I um, Marine Doughboy. It's only a 96 piece puzzle, but it was not, it's not the uh, uh, doing the jigsaw puzzle, it's the neat pictures or the, the things. I was like, wow, that looks really neat. I'll be honest with you, when I saw the uh, jigsaw thing, it reminded me so much of Dad vs. Son. Uh, when he was helping me out with uh, the D-Day Deluxe from De Decision Games there uh, with their um, silhouettes or whatever for their fire fire markers which I still haven't posted up because I need him to fix uh, some things for me so we'll take a look I guess well how about we do the what they said one at a time here I'm, I'm just taking a look I'm seeing what uh, hopefully you can see here's the t-shirt Even though I'm uh, not a very big, well, I'm a tall person, but not very heavy set. I usually get an extra large because of my uh, shoulders, but I look kind of rather odd sometimes. Because uh, the rest of the body is kind of like, like where, where, where are you? But that's going to be real, rather nice to uh, wear around, especially at game conventions uh, coming up, like Hint Hint, Can Games. Yeah, that would be nice. Here's the, the book. And I'll put it down on the thing so you can see it. Hold on, I'll zoom in a bit. There we go. So yeah, I'm not going to do a full-on whatever, but I'll, I'll take a look at the... Uh, uh, what, I'll read the back of it for you guys. Maybe you'll be able to see it, I don't know. I'll zoom in even more. Hold on. There we go. So this first published in 1918, Whiz Bangs and Woodbines presents a candid portrait of life behind the lines on the Western Front by Reverend Durrell then rector of Rotherhith and chief commissioner of the church army in France. The church army, along with its counterparts, the YMCA, TOCH, and Salvation Army, played an important part in the support and morale of soldiers in, in war. In addition to providing spiritual support, the church army welcomed more than 200,000 men each day to their recreation huts, holy smokes, and provided visits and gifts to the wounded, tents and hostels near the front lines, drove ambulances, mobile canteens, and kitchen cars. In addition to voluntary church services for those who wished to attend, a simple salvation from trench life was offered. Music, singing, concerts, card games, billiards, and refreshments. All small measures of joy in the midst of dangers and hardships, and as vital to the continued war effort as bullets and shells. For a packet of woodbines and a cup of tea was restorative ammunition enough for the average British Tommy. Hmm. And I think it was, uh, I, yeah, I got it for $17 American. So not bad. And then uh, this is the thing I was saying that kind of reminded me of uh, the, uh, Dad versus Son there with the, um, the uh, helping me out with the uh, identifying. But that looks like really, really interesting um, thing to do. And it's only 96 pieces. It's not going to take me long, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to open it up, but, it, but yeah, I didn't pay very much for that either. I think that was on sale as well. And then this one looks really fun. Um, this is History Heroes Award, and this is just another nice, simple-ish, you know, whatever. Like something to do, maybe past the time when um, I'm at Can Games or whatever. Uh, and it's, uh, it just says, guess the World War I hero to win the card. 
a fantastic 40 card quiz game to test all ages and learn amazing new facts. Ooh, if that means you don't need the card, and I paid $15 American for this, if I don't need the card, I'm wondering, could I do like a, if that's the case, like if it's, if it's somebody guessing and the other person, whatever, oh my God, there's one on animals in World War One. Winston Churchill. Oh, this is going to be totally cool. Your country needs you. Um, how to play. This is the aim. The, to have won all the cards or to have more than your opponents after an agreed time. Uh, how to play. Shuffle and deal the cards equally. The youngest player starts and asks the person on their left for facts about a history hero from the player on the left. But I could always adjust this for a live stream and do like a... Um, like a pub night trivia thing. Oh, that sounds interesting. I wouldn't mind doing that. Maybe I could say the winner gets a Trust in the Trench t-shirt. Hey, maybe that's an idea. Cool. Anyways, so I hope you guys are having a great Friday. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can uh, see more of the stuff. All right. See you later.